This is the ZTE Axon 30 Ultra disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens cover is held down with adhesive, so it can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. Once the back plate's removed, the flex table for the LED flash, ambient light sensor, and secondary mic needs to be peeled up. At this point, there are 11 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the placeholder for the LED flex cable can be removed. Followed by the top cover, and we need to route the flex cable over here through the top cover. On the top plastic cover, there are antenna lines, which are these light gray color lines, as well as the NFC antenna located in the center. There's also large graphite film to help transfer heat. At this point, there are two flex cables for the battery which need to be disconnected. Once the battery cables are disconnected, we can disconnect the rest of the cables. On the back of the LED flash flex cable, there's a secondary microphone, which is this gold piece over here. There's some graphene film and copper tape covering the connector for the front facing camera, which needs to be peeled off. Now the front facing camera can be disconnected and removed. There are also two coaxial cables on the bottom right of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button, as well as the flex cable on top of the board, need to be disconnected. Now the standoff screw on the top right and the Phillips screw on the bottom left of the board need to be removed. At this point we can lift up and remove the main board. Alright, so on this side of the board, there's the ultra zoom lens, there's another microphone located on top, and there's a graphite pad on the shield. There's also a liquid damage indicator, which is that white sticker on the side. Here's a better look with the shields removed. Taking a look at the back side, there's some copper tape and graphene film over the shield, as well as some thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back and the shield is removed, we can see some thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM, as well as some thermal pads on these chips. Moving on, there's a 64 megapixel portrait, wide, and ultra wide camera. And these cameras are held down with some adhesive. On the bottom portion, there are eight Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once those screws are removed, the bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. You can see the white foam balls over here in the speaker assembly. Now the charger port can be lifted up and removed. And there's a rubber gasket around the charger port itself. At this point we can disconnect the flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard. Next the flex cable for the fingerprint reader can be disconnected followed by the other end of the coaxial cable. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located in the center of the subboard, and the SIM reader is located on the back. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry the battery off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry off.
Here's a better look at the battery. There's a copper vapor chamber in between the frame and the screen, so we can't really see it too well. However, it runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard over here. You can see a little bit of the copper through this hole over here and over here. There's also a small copper heat block on the top right. So once the battery is removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is routed through an opening in the midframe. So if you needed to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back plate as well as the screws on the top cover. And then you'd have to disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, remove the battery, which would then give you access to the screen cable. And then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply your new screen and reassemble the phone. Moving on, there's a vibrator motor on the bottom right. There's a small antenna board on the bottom left and the flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons located here. If you need to replace those, there's a metal bracket on the inside. You just have to pull up and pull that out. The flex cable for the proximity sensor is located on top as well as the earpiece speaker, which is held down with adhesive. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the microphone opening on the bottom and on the top, as well as the speaker opening. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. And flip over the phone. Power it on and you're done. This is PBK and thanks for watching.